Hey Randy here for Gold Midwest Fishing. Today we are going to be discussing all things about lithium batteries. Now last year I decided to install lithium batteries on my boat and I was so pleased with it I'm now installing them on my camper as well. There are so many advantages to these lithium batteries and now they're at a price point that makes them cheaper than lead acid batteries in the long run. Just today I had to buy a new starter battery for this boat because after just two years of use it is now completely dead. And that's pretty typical for lead acid batteries. I've been replacing those uh, about every two years. Now compare that to this one here made by EnjoyBot. This is a Group 24 100 amp hour self-heating battery. This one sells for uh, right now $299. You can also, if you want to get one without the heating pads, you can get a, actually a Group 31 for only $199. And over the 10 plus year lifespan, it ends up being a lot cheaper in the long run. Now, if you haven't heard of a self-heating battery before, I'm gonna be discussing that along with all kinds of things about lithium batteries, so stay tuned. Well, like I said, I installed these batteries last year, so I'm no way an expert on lithium batteries, but I have learned a lot in that time, and I wanna share all the things that I've learned and the mistakes I've made so you don't have to do the same thing I did. And hopefully it will keep you from destroying or severely limiting the lifespan of your new lithium batteries. Now, if anyone here has any extra suggestions or tips about lithium batteries, feel free to write them in the comments. I have a group, group discussion about this. Okay, let's start off with an issue that we're all going to have. Now, on my boat, I have a Minn Kota Tarova trolling motor, and it has a battery charge indicator on it. You just press the button, and the amount of lights that light up will show you how full the battery is. Now, if you have a camper or RV, you have a similar system, like this one here in my camper. Press the button, and the amount of lights tell you how full the battery is. Now lead acid batteries, they slowly lose voltage as you use them. So these battery indicators are just measuring that voltage and the lower the voltage is, the less battery you have left. Well, the problem with lithium batteries is they have a fairly flat voltage curve. They're gonna hold a pretty steady voltage until right before it dies and then it's gonna sharply drop off. So your battery indicators, it's always gonna tell you the battery is full until right before it's gonna die. So we cannot use the standard battery indicators that come with our you know, RVs and our trolling motors. So how do we measure how much power we have left in our lithium batteries? Well, you use one of these right here. This is a smart shunt. This one here happens to be from Victron. It's the BMV 712 smart shunt. And this right here is the actual shunt. You attach this to the negative terminal of your battery and then all the other connections attached to the other side of the shunt and it measures the current draw that's going in and going out and by that it knows how much power is left in your battery. This one here just happens to have a gauge that comes with it that I'm going to install on the dash of my boat here. Um, most of them don't come with the gauge I, you pay extra for this one. Um, what happens is you connect via Bluetooth to your phone and there's an app there it's going to tell you everything you ever want to know about your battery. It's pretty cool but I just wanted a quick way to view it, so I'm gonna get the gauge and put it in my boat here. All right, installing this is worthy of its own video, so I will uh, make a whole video installing this, and I'll put the link to that down in the description in case you wanna see how to do that as well. Now let's talk about charging your battery, which is probably the most important issue regarding maintaining a long battery life. Okay, most chargers, they're made for lead acid batteries and they do not work on lithium. That is the quickest way to ruin your batteries right there. Okay, these batteries require between 14.2 and 14.6 volts to charge them. And most standard chargers won't do that, so check your charger to make sure it does charge lithium batteries. You can get a standalone lithium charger or you can get one that you can change modes on it, like the one I have in my boat here. I have the Naco Genius uh, it's a three bank, 10 amp charger. And what I love about this charger is that you can set it for each individual battery. So if you have a setup like I do in my boat, I got two lithium batteries, batteries up front and a lead acid in the back for starting. So I have two of the batteries set up for lithium and the back one set up for lead acid and it can charge each one individually according to its type. Now in case you're wondering if you can use a lithium battery to use as a starter battery, and up until about now, the answer was no. They're only used for deep cycle use. But looks like the technology is finally here. I found a few dual purpose lithium batteries and some 
you know, straight up lithium starter batteries. Here's one I found at Cabela's for $869. Uh, kind of steep price tag there. So I didn't go with that. But the main reason I didn't go with lithium for that is uh, I was reading up on it and there's a few issues yet. I don't think the technology is quite there yet. Um, in one case, the manufacturer is saying if your motor has a stator, you cannot use lithium because the stator does not produce ele enough electricity to charge the battery. It only recommended it for uh, boat motors that were a very high horsepower and had an alternator. And then there's still a bunch of stipulations there that it might not work. Uh, one guy said he solved it and start right up and then the motor would quit. And he wasn't sure why. Well, inside these batteries, there's a BMS. It's a battery management system and it detects the voltage. And if it's anything outside of the voltage that it can operate at, it'll shut the battery down. So what's happening, he was starting up his motor. The motor put out a spike of voltage and the BMS shut the, <laughs> the battery down, which then turned his motor off. So just that's an example of what could happen. So um, if you do decide to go for lithium for your starting battery, just make sure you uh, do some research there. You might have some issues if you don't have the correct motor for it. Okay, now we're going to talk about voltage balancing. Uh, get this little note right with the uh, packaging with these batteries. And it says right here, we recommend balancing the voltage of the battery packs with the following steps before connecting them in series. So I got a 24 volt trolling motor, so I'm connecting two 12 volt batteries in series get the 24 volts so therefore we need to balance these and to be honest with you I was like I'm not entirely sure how to do that well luckily all the instructions are right here so I'm going to show you how I did that um, I did it last night and it worked good so I'm going to show you the steps that I took all right step one says to charge them individually so we'll hook up our chargers there and then we want to make sure it's on the lithium mode so we'll change that to the lithium and we're going to let that charge until it's fully charged and then I'll put it on the second battery and do that as well. All right, next we're going to connect them in parallel for up to 12 hours. All right, now we're just going to let it sit like that and 12 hours later the battery should equalize between each other. All right, it's important to note that you're going to want to use the same length and diameter cable going to each side so it's equal and then next we're going to check the voltage of each battery 13.31 13.31 so you're going to want them within 40 millivolts of each other and looks like we uh, got that so we're good to go ready to install them All right now we're going to install the batteries in the boat Now my last ones were group 31, and these are only like group 24, so they're a little bit smaller, but they both had a 100 amp hour rating, so apparently they put out the same amount of power even though they're a little bit smaller battery. All right, we've got our trolling motor cables right here. Positive, we got a circuit break around there. Install that to the positive on the first battery. And the negative goes to the negative of the second battery. Then we have our jumper cable. It's going to go from the negative of the first battery to the positive of the second battery. So and that's your basic series uh, wiring there. Positive to negative to positive to negative. But now we have the battery chargers. And those we're going to charge individually. So we have two wires here. Start off with the one right here. And these go to each individually charged 12 volts. So we're going to, on the first battery and then on the second battery, and even though it's wired in series, it knows to charge each individual battery. Okay, that's all there is. I'm going to just tighten everything down. And then when I'm done here, I'll be installing the smart shunt in the battery monitoring system. So be sure to check out that video as well. All right, now all three new batteries are installed. Let's plug it in and see if they all show a good charge. So first it's going to test them all. Lithium, lithium, lead acid. And 
I'm starting to show a charge, so everything looks good. All right, earlier I discussed how these were self-heating batteries. Now, the one real drawback about lithium is that they don't like cold weather. So once it gets 32 degrees, they won't take a charge anymore. So if you're gonna be operating your boat, camp, whatever, below freezing, and uh, I live in Minnesota, so it gets quite cold here, and I'm usually on the water until they start, the lakes freeze over. So as many times I'm out there when it's below freezing out. So that's why I switched out the uh, lithium batteries I had for self-heating batteries. Now, a little manual comes here, talks all about the self-heating part of it. So I just want to read you a little bit of what they say about the uh, self-heating properties. It says when it drops below 32 degrees, the charging, uh, the battery will automatically turn on the heating pads. So ideally it wants to reach 41 degrees before it starts uh, charging the battery. And according to this, if uh, say you start charging it right at 32 degrees, it's going to take 1.5 to 2 hours to reach the 41 degrees before it actually starts charging the battery. If you start charging at about 15 degrees outside, it'll take 2 to 3 hours to heat up that battery before it starts charging the battery. So just take that into account if you're charging it when in cold weather, factor in a few hours just to warm it up before you actually start charging the battery. So just so you understand this correctly, it's not using power from the battery to heat those heating pads. It's only using power from the actual charger. And it says it uses initial three to six amps to charge to uh, heat those pads. So it rec recommends a minimum of eight amps or higher uh, charger. And it recommends technically a 10 amp to 40 amp lithium ion charger um, to work with these heating pads. So make sure you don't have like a five amp charger or something, make sure it's a, you know, a 10 amp would be preferable or higher. And also when that heating function is turned on, it's only gonna use three to six amps regardless of how much, you know, amperage your charger's putting into it. If you can charge it, you know, 40, 50 amps, it's still only gonna use that three to six amps. And then once it's heated up, then it'll take the rest of the power from your charger to actually charge the lithium batteries. Which is another plus of lithium is you can charge them at a much higher amperage rate than you can with lead acid. Now, lead acid, they say, you know, usually no more than 10 amps, where lithium can take usually 40 to 50 amps. I've seen some that will take a 100 amp charge, but, you know, they recommend generally around 40 amps is ideal to charge them quick and not damage the battery. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little something about lithium batteries. I've been loving them, and like I said, if you haven't made the switch, now is the time to do it. There's plenty of them out there for a very good price. And in the long run, they'll cost you less than the lead acid batteries. All right, well, I'm going to continue on, and I'm going to install my smart shunt. So make sure you check out that video next. Like I said, I'll link it down in the description, along with any of the products and stuff I used here. I'll try to get links to them in case you want to use them as well. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching. See you on the next video.